Announced at SIGGRAPH, the Radeon Pro WX8200 is AMD's latest graphics card to hit the workstation market. Being a GPU based on the RX Vega 56, it's safe to say that the WX8200 will deliver solid gaming performance, and based on what we know of Radeon Pro, that should translate well to compute performance as well. With the 200 in its name, this card is a bit of an oddball given the 100 class naming we saw before it. But with the 8200, AMD effectively introduces the second release cycle for Radeon Pro, although I'm not sure it's safe to call it second gen, since the 8200 is based on first gen Vega just as the 9100 is. Nonetheless, the WX8200 offers a lot for its price point. It's capped at 8GB of memory, which might throw some off, but it's at least error correction capable, which isn't something we see at the $1000 price point often, or even ever. With 3,584 Vega cores under the hood, the WX8200 is no slouch when it comes to raw performance, either for compute or graphics. The only cards in AMD's Radeon Pro lineup that would beat out the WX8200 in performance would be the WX9100 and SSG. Both of those cards have 4,096 cores and a full 16GB of memory. The SSG is special in that it has 2TB of SSD storage on the card itself, allowing the GPU to get even closer to the project cache, such as with Adobe Premiere Pro. The 8200 is a great all-around card thanks to its 999 price point and the amount of performance it offers. It's not going to beat out the competition in all tests, but it performs extremely well in a few others. For comparison's sake, the performance results here also include the RX Vega 64, so that we can easily see which tests benefit from Radeon Pro performance optimizations. I remember when the WX9100 launched at $2200, but here we are, with the same card being sold regularly for around $1400. Even before looking at our results, I'd have to wager that if I were choosing to go with the WX8200, I'd think long and hard about whether or not I'd want more than 8GB of memory, and not to mention the extra performance. You don't gain an enormous amount by stepping up to the 9100, but it's what I'd consider the more future-proofed card. For those who may care, here's a quick look at our test system specs. In all, 14 GPUs are being tested for this video, although because we had a second Titan XP on hand, dual GPU results also appear throughout. If that dual GPU configuration isn't found in a chart, it simply means that there was no scaling to be found in that particular test. And with that... With the straightforward 4K to 1080p encode, all of the big cards perform essentially the same in Adobe's Premiere Pro. When a real project is brought into the mix, the cards get separated up a lot more. Both the Vega 64 and WX8200 perform about the same, and Nvidia's Quadro P4000 beats out both in the tech gauge encode. With the 8K to 4K encode, it becomes easier to understand that you definitely want decent horsepower if your goal is video work in Premiere Pro. The smaller cards struggle, making anything above the Quadro P4000 or Radio Pro WX8200 an ideal match, though a gaming card like the RX580 does not fall far behind realistically. We've seen strong performance from AMD in Magix's Vegas Pro before, and that continues to be the case with the latest version, at least for the most part. Interestingly, while I thought that the Taipei 101 project was the more grueling of the two here, AMD's card struggled with the Air Canada 1 overall. There, the lowly Quadro P2000 managed to outperform a relative beast like the WX8200. But with the nighttime Taipei project, AMD's thrinks return. With the help of Sci Software's Sandra, we get to peek into a look at the WX8200's crypto, financial, and scientific performance. And this is what I would call a great start. Is it any surprise that AMD performs so well in cryptography? Here, the Vega 64 slides just in behind the RTX 2080 Ti, and ahead of the Titan XP. The WX8200, meanwhile, jeers at that same Titan XP from a short distance away. AMD continues to perform great in the scientific test, sitting behind the Vega 64 and ahead of every GeForce and Radeon, aside from the Turing-based RTX 2080 Ti. What matters most with this kind of testing is the speed of the GPU, but AMD clearly has certain optimizations for this workload that Nvidia doesn't or it at least doesn't have enough to redeem itself here. You know, ignoring the fact that the RTX 2080 Ti dominates overall. That doesn't explain the faster Titan XP falling behind the WX8200 though. With the financial test, AMD's cards do not perform quite as strongly. Here, Nvidia absolutely slaughters the entire collection thanks to its RTX card performing better than even the dual Titan XPs. The financial score is an aggregate result of three algorithms, including Black Shoals, Binomial, and Monte Carlo. With Black Shoals, the 2080 Ti performs beyond the Titan XP what you'd expect, but performance in Binomial and Monte Carlo is literally doubled, hence the domination here. Recent AMD CPUs and GPUs alike love Blender's Cycles Renderer, and the best proof of that is seen near the top. The AMD Radeon RX Vega 64 beat out every one of Nvidia's GPUs. That even includes the Titan XP. 
The WX8200 is similar hardware to a Vega 56, and it places about where I'd expect. It sits real close to NVIDIA's Pascal-based Quadro P6000. As the Titan XP is the technically more powerful card of the two, AMD clearly has some great optimizations going on with this popular design tool. WX8200 even beats out NVIDIA's Quadro P5000. The WX9100 would overlap Vega 64's positioning if it existed here, giving AMD a strong lead in this suite overall. There are a few things to talk about with these Luxmark results. For starters, the results at the bottom are correct. The WX3100 for some reason performed better in the Lux Ball render over the WX4100, despite the opposite being true for the Hotel render. Beyond that, everything else scales pretty much as expected. The WX8200 performs directly behind the Titan XP in the Lux Ball render, and a bit behind the Vega 64 in the Hotel render. Unfortunately for AMD, Nvidia's new Touring RTX cards appear to be really good at Luxmark. Compared to the GTX 1080 Ti, the RTX 2080 Ti scores almost double the Lux Ball score and about 70% more in the Hotel score. It might be a good thing RTX doesn't work in Blender right now, or we might have seen a different picture painted earlier. I'm only going to touch on Pro Render performance briefly here, but if you want deeper information on this renderer in particular, I'd encourage you to check out the website where an article took care of that earlier this week. There, you'll find some heterogeneous rendering results, not entirely important to this particular review. Overall, NVIDIA rules ProRender, which is kind of like saying AMD rules V-Ray, except that one's not true. I had thought before that AMD's Radeon Pros offered ProRender optimizations, but it's clear that's not actually the case, with the slightly faster RX 580 outperforming the equally geared WX7100. In ProRender, the more GPU horsepower you have, the better. That might seem strange to say when the dual GPU configuration in the chart performs worse than the single GPU complement, but that's because multi-GPU on NVIDIA is just not supported well in ProRender right now. As far as I understand it, or in other words, from what AMD tells me, dual Radeon Pros will have no problem scaling well with this renderer. To kick off our look at viewport performance, we're greeted by 3DS Max. Sheer strength is the name of the game with this suite. Quadros and Radeon Pros don't seem to offer special performance optimizations at all, which is a great thing for those who use the suite. Note that this wouldn't necessarily mirror performance if you're using a plug-in specific viewport, but the faster the GPU you're equipped with, the happier you'll be editing in 3ds Max. Maya shows very similar scaling to Max, except here, Radeon Pros do have specific performance optimizations in place. That helps the WX8200 leap ahead of the technically faster WX Vega 64. It also places the card right behind the Quadro P5000, which is currently priced at about 70% higher than AMD's WX8200, but again, that card has twice the VRAM. On AMD's side, performance optimizations seem to be in place that helps push the WX8200 to sit just behind the Vega 64. Given this scaling, it seems likely that the WX9100 would outperform the Vega 64, but it'd still sit behind the slightly less expensive Quadro P5000. NVIDIA's cards are a little interesting in that Katia makes use of performance optimizations in the Quadros, but also the Titan XP. The GeForce cards, including the 1080 Ti and the newly released RTX 2080 Ti, both fall to the middle of the pack, behind the P4000, which is equivalent to a GPU sitting in between the GTX 1060 and 1070. We've seen good performance from the WX8200 throughout most of the tests up to this point, but its SolidWorks performance is notable. Whereas AMD delivered the same performance on both Radeon and Radeon Pro and Katia, the professional cards are blessed with specific performance optimizations in SolidWorks. Here, the WX8200 sits just behind the Quadro P5000, and in third place overall. Nvidia saves the best SolidWorks performance for its Quadro cards, which means the gaming cards are simply not a great choice. Even a modest Quadro P2000 outperforms the RTX 2080 Ti. Not by much, mind you, but it still happens, and you sure wouldn't expect it. I like to say it pays to know your workload a lot, and it's with applications like Siemens NX that makes it really important. Gaming GPUs on both sides of the fence fall to the absolute bottom here, though it's notable that the Radeons double the performance of the GeForces. It's not like that matters though, because you can get dramatically improved performance by opting for one of the smallest Quadro or Radeon Pros in the chart. This is another suite where the WX8200 falls just behind the P5000, despite costing a lot less. The WX8200 also performs a lot better than the Vega 64, again hinting at specific Radeon Pro optimizations. In both the medical and energy tests, the cards scale pretty much as you'd expect given their rated performance. I will say that these results only paint part of the overall picture though. On the smaller Radeon Pros, the energy test took ages to get through in comparison to every other card. If you're involved in the purchasing of hardware for these industries, hopefully you know not to go with the lowest end cards on the market. 
That said, in both of these tests, NVIDIA outperforms AMD pretty easily overall, with 1080p performance being a lot better in the medical test for some reason. Based on these results, NVIDIA appears to offer the same AutoCAD performance optimizations in both its GeForce and Quadros, but AMD offers its own in our dreams. It's not often we see such a clear divide between one vendor and another in a chart. For the best AutoCAD performance, you're not likely going to be scouting out a Radeon Pro. I'll talk about the gaming performance in one fell swoop, because the scaling is almost identical across the board. The WX8200 performs behind the Vega 64 in all three tests to the same degree you'd expect to see the Vega 56 to. That means it settles in right behind Nvidia's Quadro P5000. Overall, not too much to comment on here, but good performance overall, even if it's what we'd expect to see. I didn't dive into real games this go around, but it goes without saying that the WX8200 is more than capable of delivering a quality experience, especially for 1440p. When AMD unveiled its Radeon Pro WX8200 at SIGGRAPH, it was a little confusing for two reasons. For starters, there was a 2 in the name. But as mentioned earlier, this is simply to signify the second release cycle of Radeon Pro devices. The second reason for confusion was the choice to ship with 8GB of VRAM. For the cost, many people expected more, and while I think it would have been nice to see more, I don't think it's going to affect most people who are going to use this card. And if there is a limitation, that's why it again pays to know your workload. The fact of the matter is, HBM2 is expensive, and AMD couldn't put 16GB of the stuff on this card for the same reason we don't see 16GB on the Vega 64, and likewise why we only see 16GB on the bigger WX9100. AMD could have tacked on more memory if it wanted to charge more, and at that point it'd fight even closer to the WX9100, which would be strange, especially with that card available for 1400 it won't matter if you don't use it, but it's important to note that the WX8200 ships with ECC memory, which is something that surprises me a bit. The WX7100 didn't have any, and for NVIDIA, you need to go with the $1700 Quadro P5000 to get any. Though to be fair, that card does include 16GB. Given what the Radeon Pro WX8200 offers, I'd wager the 999 asking price is fair. From a gaming perspective, it has the power to deliver quality experiences, and the same can be said for design. As with any workstation GPU, you really need to understand where the benefits can be seen, and on which vendor's GPU. With Siemens NX, for example, you'd screw yourself over if you assumed gaming cards would be suitable enough. The WX8200 doesn't dominate most workloads, but it does deliver super strong performance in certain cases, such as with cryptography and scientific performance, as well as great performance in Katia, SolidWorks, Siemens NX, and solid performance in Creo, Maya, and 3DS Max. As with any new workstation GPU that hits the lab, the WX8200 isn't just going to go sit on a shelf. It'll be kicking around, being retested again and again over time, especially as new cards land, and as more tests get added to the suite. If you have questions about the WX8200 that I didn't answer here, please leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet but enjoy our content, please consider doing so. Thank you for watching.